the defense. Looking at them over the course of the past two weeks, mm-hmm. them boys are stingy. Very. They're not giving up a lot. And this is, you know, first through, well, we haven't seen the first yet, but second and third string. Mm-hmm. I know we had a couple um, uh, first stringers pop in and out of there, but mm-hmm. man, if this is an indication of what we're going to be, when the first strings get back, there are going to be some problems. Welcome to another session with them Dennis boys on this Whiskey Wednesday. You got your boy B. Bebo. EJ. We're going to kick off this session by starting off with some camp notes, you know, in front of the preseason game and whatnot. Uh, kick it off the pops. Go ahead, take it. Well, just to talk about a couple of things that um, kind of were outstanding to me from this past weekend. Um, I'd be a little bit remiss if I didn't bring the most outstanding thing that happened the weekend, which was my boy Brandon Aubrey kicking that 66-yard field goal. 13, Brandon, let's go. Good for hey, 70. Uh, yeah, 72. they said it was good for set. Would have been good from 72, which is awesome. You know, that tells me a couple of things. Um, if we can get the ball, we have problems. If we can get the ball to the other team 45. You know, we got three of nothing else. And yeah. the way the defense is playing so stingy, that can be used down the wire, you know, to have a foot like that. That is, that's like a, a team in itself almost, you know. Granted, there'll be a lot of 12 to 7 ball games, but, you know, a win is a win in my book. So, Thanks. Yeah. You got? yeah, man, it's priceless to have a kicker like that, that you got, you know, assurance in like that. I mean, especially in the playoffs and the tight games and clutch games, divisional games, you know, you can come down to a kick. So uh, it, it's very, very key to hell. We've been got our heart broken a couple of times because of kickers, you know, Mason Crosby. Uh, but, you know, just having that, Mike, Mike McCarthy should feel really good, you know what I'm saying, going into games, man, especially in them dog fights, like you said, man. It could be – we don't know what the offense is going to look like, you know, thus far. And it look like we're going to be running the ball primarily as well, too, with the line being refreshed. So uh, kicking is going to be major. And, and might I add, he make it look real easy. Real easy. <laughs> Real clean. <laughs> when, you, when you think about it, over the course of the years, the Cowboys had some great kick, kickers from through there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we seem to keep them just till their usefulness uh, runs out, and then we find another good one. So we've been mm-hmm. fortunate in the uh, the field goal kicking uh, arena. Absolutely. Um, Somebody definitely got a high for it. Oh, yeah, no doubt. Especially that one because it came like like out of obscurity, you know, out of nowhere. Right. True. So, Got blessed. Yeah. Yes. Big time. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that that kind of um, stood out to me was the O line, the performance the last couple of weeks. Uh, for the most part, they've been keeping our quarterback quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, been been looking real good. He's had time to throw some passes. Um, and you know, when he throws that many passes. You know, forty-one passes. You've had some time. So, oh yeah. You know that's that's a, that's that's a great thing. Uh, what you guys feel about the old line performance? Um, they they look good. I mean, you know, they went against Raiders' first team defense, defensively the defensive line, and they did great on Max Crosby. I think he had, I think he had maybe one sack or one type for loss, one or two. But, I mean, for the most part, I mean, they come off firing on the ball. You see that uh, Mr. BB, he got his chance to go with the ones, you know, and he looked good. I mean, he, he tell he's been working on his snap, which was the biggest problem. 
So mm-hmm. I'm biggest question mark. I'm really excited. And if you look with Tyler, Tyler Guyton, man, he's firing off the ball. That's the first thing. That first play, he fired off the ball. I said, oh, that boy going to be something. He going to be something. He's special. He's surprised to give him his props. He's special. Yeah. 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 I mean, yeah, that you, – you can see the youthfulness, you know, restored in the line. You know what I'm saying? And that athleticism and, and them reaching the levels. And you see that impact in the run game. We had a 137 yards on 31 carries. You know what I'm saying? Even though, you know, um, Trey Lance had 34 of them. But – the rest of them, the, the boys hey, were hey, running. Hey, yeah. he, was just, he was just doing what he do, you know. Yeah, you know, we do what he do. He going to get that, you know, no matter what. Um, but everybody else, I mean, had great flashes. You know, Deuce, Deuce Vaughn, we finally had a sighting for him. He he rushed the ball looking like the full potential that we was been expecting of uh, right. day one. Uh, your, your boy Freeman, Freeman came in there. He yeah. runs hard. He runs hard. Like he runs hard. Yeah. He runs hard. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't notice that until I seen some highlights where he played against us last year. He runs hard. He does. He does. Just yeah. his health. His health has always been his, his thing. But when he in there, he's always been productive, you know. You know, that's one great thing right now. We got a good stable of running backs. Mm-hmm. Plug and play, you know, the best we got to do. They all run hard. You know, they all are elusive to a certain extent. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'm, uh, I'm more optimistic about our running back situation today and say I was four or five months ago. Mm-hmm. I think we're going to be good in that area. And they say they say Royce Freeman is also a, a great special team guy to why he was picked up. That's great. So I'm looking forward to if he can help contribute to, you know, get some carries and do what he do. I, I say we keep four running backs. I mean, I like Deuce, of course. I mean, oh, yeah. if they got like multiple, 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 multiple offense. This yeah, is, they got multiple value. Yeah, he can't beat that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I just hope they can find him a place to, to stay on the team. Yeah, um, moving over to uh, the offensive side of the ball again, uh, the wide receivers. Um, the guy, uh, Flournoy, I believe his name is, mm-hmm. he, popped, he, he popped big time. He popped big time. Mm-hmm. Uh, not only was he getting open and running good routes, but more importantly, he was catching the catching ball. The ball. So again, I'm going to reiterate my point that I'm more. Um, even until we get CD back, I'm okay with our wide receiver situation with Jalen, 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 and Mr. Flournoy kind of carrying the load. Um, mm-hmm. it'll, it'll, it'll re, it remains to be seen which will be two, three assigned down the line with Brandon Cooks thrown in there. So that's going to shake itself out probably by a third, fourth game of the season. We would know who our one, two, and three solids are. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jaden Brooks kind of shook me there for a second when he dropped that one easy one, but I feel like he was trying to sabotage my boy for a second. <laughs> <laughs> we, hey, we allow we allow him one drop. You know, you know, yeah, but yeah, it, it's I cool. Think. You know, it, everybody bounced back. Everybody started getting in rhythm, and you know, that's that's really the thing with Trey Lance is give him a chance. You know, he, he's trying to get his feet wet. You see everybody got quiet, you know, in our little Cowboys chat after he started, you know, connecting past. You ain't see nobody say nothing <laughs> from, the, from, from the time we talked about that thing rolling. Yeah, didn't hear nothing. So it went crickets. <laughs> I'm putting the points up. Stop being to put the points up get real quiet. Right. I just want to put I'll that out there. I was surprised you didn't come back and comment about that. It, it ain't me. It ain't no need. No need. Because y'all see it. You know what I mean? Y'all see it. That he wasn't throwing no more high passes. He, he was putting it on point. He settled and in. Of course, he was showing he can use his feet. So that's that's what we like to see. That's sure. what I'm, that's the positive part. What I was trying to show y'all, where it opens up the whole game. Like this is what the game is evolving to. They have no mobile quarterback, but you know, I digress. Hey, you're right. He he made improvements, and and it showed, and his confidence showed too. Mm-hmm. Um, right. and, and receivers did show up, and you know, it didn't hurt to have a good balanced running game as well. So. They opened up the offense and, and it showed by us scoring 27 points this week versus, you know, scoring barely something last week. And, and, um, and, all, and all that's going to help out CD when he comes back because they're not going to be able to just focus on him. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, and rep, right. he's ripped the prices, man, getting these, these, all these first team reps in, in camp and practice and all that and then being able to do it in the preseason, man. This, this is game gaining value for our receiver room for sure. Tight end room too because, man, look. True. 
them boys, them boys look good too. We even blocking if you pay attention to them. Yeah, it's gonna be key. We're gonna do a lot of tight end, two two tight end sets this year, I'm sure. So All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gonna be nice. The other yeah. thing I wanted to mention is um the defense. Looking at them over the course of the past two weeks, mm-hmm. them boys are stingy. Very. They're not giving up a lot. And this is, you know, first through, well, we haven't seen the first yet, but second and third string. Mm-hmm. I know we had a couple um, uh, first stringers pop in and out of there, but mm-hmm. man, if this is an indication of what we're going to be, when the first stringers get back, there are going to be some problems. Big problem. Yeah. I mean, you can't have too much depth. So, you know, you got guys who showing value throughout your depth chart, man. It, it just tell you how strong it is. And when you got to make them tough choices and make them cuts, man, that's that's a good thing, but it's a bad thing at the same time, man. You try to keep as many on the on the practice squad as you can. But yeah, uh Zimmer, Zimmerman, you can say you can tell like a lot of his defense he disguises what you see is might not what you get. So I, I love that. Thanks. So like that's going that's that makes me excited because you see yeah. them they'll line up in something and they get to move in you know what I'm saying packing out the line looking like they bought the blitz they back you know what I mean I mean that's just that's beautiful yeah that can be I, 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 I watch him on the sideline I, I just like his fire you know mm-hmm. he's into the game he's into what his players are doing he's on top of he's managing that process and you could tell the total a total difference. Um, <laughs> Our defense, you know, year over year, in terms of what he's bringing to that we already see that you know mm-hmm. we haven't seen consistently over the past few years with the amount of success, even though despite the amount of success we've had, mm-hmm. I just think he's gonna just take it to another level for us. Oh, yeah, right. absolutely. So, I mean, he's apparently still got that energy, you know, what I'm saying that's rubbing off on the defense, man, because his personality and is, is really rubbing off, and you can see it on the field and, and the scheme that. You know, disguise and stuff like that. I don't think we've had that in a long time. I'm trying to think who the last person who brought that for us as a defensive coordinator, man. So yes. I'm, I'm liking what, what, what we got going so far. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. And we ain't, like I said, the one's not even out there. So mm-hmm. I can only imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I imagine more more. They'll, see, they'll see some action this week, though. It makes you more and more excited just to watch, though, knowing that the one's not out there. True. So True. it's going to be amazing. Yeah. yeah no. I mean, it's probably the best uh, preseason I think I've seen in totality in a while. You know, True. we going over. You know, our offense was a little shaky, and we, we understand why. Um, but at the same time, they were dominating the game for the most part. You know, it just wouldn't finish sure. the drive, you know. Even first game, too. First game, we dominated first and second game. So, mm-hmm. and, but this, defense really is the executed the red zone, really. Mm-hmm. This last uh, preseason game, um, couldn't come in a better time, you know, because them boys got Harbaugh out there. And, you know, he's going to be trying to make a statement in his last game. Mm-hmm. And I can't think of a better test for us to prove what we going to be like, what we're going to look like. Because, he's, you know, he, he he don't play. He brings the horses. So uh, oh, both, yeah. sides, both sides of the ball. His, his teams take on his personality. So yeah, for sure. this, this, we couldn't have a better opponent for our last preseason game. And uh, mm-hmm. have him. So we get to see some of our ones playing this next one. Um, not sure who they're going to keep out, who is a go. I guess whoever's borderline injuries trying to protect them, them the ones won't go, and the ones who can going to go. Yeah, let them go at least by two series. Yeah, I wouldn't put about that much longer than that. That's long enough to give us some indication of um, their game readiness. Mm-hmm. So, so, question: After watching preseason game number two, who's your number two quarterback? Are you addressing that to me or Brandon? You specifically, because I'm. <laughs> yeah. I would do that. Do it for me. I am. I mean, well, you have to look at the amount of reps that one got more than the other one. So, um, based on the amount of reps, I mean, you have to go with Trey Lance. But we hadn't seen we hadn't seen much of Cooper Rush, you know. I don't. We don't have a feel for how how he is or where, he, where he's going to be at. So, to answer your question, um, Trey Lance is number two right now based on the amount of opportunity presented to him. Is that answer, well, sir? Traditionally, how they've been playing it by letting Cooper Rush come in for those initial drives, 
they're treating him as if he's in the second row acting right. in the depth chart. If you know, if we're going traditionally, but based on the um, uh, occurrences that happen in the growth between week one and week two for Trey Lance, it's going to be very interesting going into this last game how they play that out. Um, I'll be in. I mean, I, who, who's to say if Dak does dress up? We don't know. They might set him out. Plot they, twist. Plot, plot twist. twist. And they so, can start Trey Lance out that thing and then let Cooper Russ do the second half. Right. That, that's hey, what I, I would like to see, honestly. I see that like, huh? I could see that happen. Or no, vice versa. Right they might give uh, Cooper Rush one half and give Trey Lance another half. But I want to I want to go with the ones. Everybody oh. but that in there. I got in CD, of course. Okay. That's what I would like to see. I would like to see that. Well, speaking of CD, you know, mm-hmm. uh, all of the rumors are they're pretty close to an agreement. So uh, we can expect to see him on the field sometime soon, more likely. We don't know what version of him we're going to get based on the fact that he held out. But, you know, it is I mean, what, what, it, what, what, what is y'all's opinion on him asking for more than 33 a year, which I I mean, this that's the game, the contract game. When one position player gets his payday to be the top guy, the next guy leapfrog, no matter if it's about one cent, 100,000, whatever it is. That's I'm just sorry. how it goes. Yeah, but, yeah, I mean, yeah. it, it, yeah. Might not be the, it might not be the dollar amount. It might be the years. It could be the, the performance uh, structuring in it or whatever. We don't know. It, it might not be that. If they're saying it that close, it, it's some minute stuff. He's going to be offended in a minute. Well, we do know that these days here, just like uh, um, in college, you know, NIL sets the standard these days. In um, in pro football, the players are setting the standards now. You know, the owners no longer have control. If you want that player, you're going to have to pay that player, you know, or somebody else will pay him. So right, right now it's pretty much, see, he can pretty much command what he wants and he'll get it. And that's a great thing, man. I, I'm glad the NFL is getting to that point where the players are actually being able to command that type of money. Especially the star players, man. Them, them guys really care to lead. You know what I'm saying? They really wouldn't get where they are, you know, if it, the NFL itself if it wasn't for the star players. So, I agree. They're, they're the ones that putting the fans in the seats. I mean, you know. Sure. And CD, CD was the offense last year for the most part. I man, he had a big slice of that pie, man. So they shouldn't let him go through all that. You know what I'm saying? But uh, him being out of camp, I'm not worrying about that. The only thing I'm worrying about is Dak being able to, you know, being used to throwing to, you know, uh, Honda Accords, and he get that Ferrari back out there where he get that timing right. That's the only thing I'm worried about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, one thing I want to throw in there real quick, and you know, and, and watching some of the sports shows this week, um, more on more than one occasion, on more than one show. You know, it was brought up that um, Jerry Jones pays certain players without them having to sit out, and there are certain players that he historically hasn't paid without them holding out. Mm-hmm. I don't call any names, but if you're a Cowboy fan and you know your Cowboy history, you know who all those players are on both sides of that 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 situation. You know. And, and, and it's hard to argue that point because it's pretty much played out like that. Whether it's intentional or not, I don't know. I'm hoping it's not because then that would be, paint a whole different picture of, of our owner than probably I'd like to believe as a supporter of this team. But, you know, if it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, and swims like a duck, most of the time. That's it's a guy named Doug. You hey, I heard that same point, man. When you go back and look at the track record and look at the pattern, it adds up, man. You really can't argue against it. And yeah. uh, because some people they ain't got a waiting line, the check is already waiting on them. You know what I'm saying? Number nine they ain't never had to wait. He he got yeah. his, always got his pile a little early, you know what I'm saying? And 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 his best bud, his roommate. Never, never had, had to wait. wait. Nope. You know what I'm saying? Everybody else had to go sit at the table, sit out. Couple, a lot of other stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Couple of football linemen. Yeah. Sean Lee had to wait either. No, he didn't. Uh, You're right. He stayed in. Facts. See, I wasn't going to call the names. Y'all wouldn't start calling names, but. 
Hey, he ne- and he never really earned it. Now you think about it, he never was on the field long enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? So that that make it even worse. But I mean, hey, that's a damn duck, I guess, man. I can't you can't look at it another way. Yeah, you can. We also have history of off the field issues too. Though. I had to throw that out there. But not all of them, man. It's still a variable. Not with all the players that he didn't pay. Still a variable. Regardless how you look at it. Tank, Tank been clean. Emmett Smith. Hey, your owner. <laughs> but still, your owner has still been squatted on by certain players in the oh, organization. Mike, I feel Mike Irvin. Well, well he 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 needed he yeah, they needed to right. break the it. That's that's a a argument for a different day. Oh, yeah. You you he have because I'm a little bad. He probably took pay cuts because they know all the BS they had to deal with. Yeah, <laughs> that's just I'm just saying. Like you, you got to look at it both ways too. So I mean, I get it. So, but like, most cases they don't like, draft them kind of guys. They don't draft them kind of guys. That's where I'm at with it. So I'm saying like certain players they go out and do some stupid stuff, and well, you just pay them. Or you got somebody who's an issue on the sideline, cutting up. I ain't got to call his name either. But if you think about it, only one or two of those players may have been significant to the team. Think about it. I mean, significant in different different quantities, but the impact – still hits the same, you know what I'm saying? When you do certain players one way versus the other. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm going to let that go. (laughs) No said on that topic. It it ain't going to matter. You can talk about all day. Ain't that going to (laughs) change? I mean, at the end of the day, it's not never going to make sense. I mean, I can name some players, too, who we paid that shouldn't have got one. Period. Yeah, of course. We can make a, a long list of that, you know what I'm saying? But so I mean, it's just I uh, you know. It's hard if we ain't got fifteen billion, that. we need to shut the hell up because ain't that gonna change? I feel like with the CD situation, it don't fall into that category because mm-hmm. the amount of money he asking for, he should have took whatever they just offered him. If that's the rumor, he should have took that because you're not the number one in the league. You you number two. You the number two in the league, not number one. The number yeah, one guy got paid the number one money. If your if your owner's son comes out and says they're negotiating that if he asks him for that kind of money, we're going to use him as such. I'm going to get every dime I can get just in case when I'm getting these 200 targets, I got some insurance to back me up. I don't blame. Yeah, him. but he also yeah. he also had to stay healthy and while doing so. So but he he but, did what he did up to this point. It's time to get paid. Yeah, but no man, matter he, no matter what he makes, no matter what they end up giving him, a week or two, a month, a year down the road, that's gonna be low again. It's gonna be the low number again because they keep putting money, put the money, out, putting the money out there, and they they're gonna keep. It's just the nature of the business. That's what the trend is now. Well, that's what the like, league is trending towards. Well, the so NFL need to raise the salary cap. That's what they need to do. It is. It goes up every year because they make no, it. It, 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 it didn't go up tremendously. Well, if the profit goes up tremendously, it will go as follows. They need to, the NFL need to be treated how the NBA is being treated. Oh, agree. They way behind. Oh yeah, they. That's they, what they, I'm they, saying. That's, that's the PA fault. Yeah, but yeah, it's just, uh, it's just the nature of the game. I mean, you know, all the salary caps, all that, all that, doing protecting the owners and keeping the players from getting paid. The owners are making the money. Oh, for know. sure. Well, they sure. are making the money. You know, it's just up to the NFLPA to see these guys get what they just do is. But even so, it's just like going to a casino. You might hit a jackpot this week, but, you know, they're not going to let you win but so much because they're going to come back and get that jackpot and more if you keep going back. For you sure. But, that, well, that, but we wouldn't even be having that conversation if they just go ahead and a lot a little more money. I mean, it's a lot more talent in the NFL nowadays, you know, than back then. So it's like, it really shouldn't be no reason why they shouldn't have found some kind of way to raise the cap. Hey, they got a business structure in place, man, and they trying to pace the growth. Um, and then, you know, they, they do do a lot, you know, with 
allocate their money here at the same time, even though they make it. Hey, hey, and we're making those kind of decisions about that same topic. Mm. Who's one of the leaders that helped make that decision? Exactly. That most respect. He ain't worrying about a damn thing. <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah. So Jerry Jones, Jerry Jones has a lot of cash. Mm. For sure, those kind of decisions. So, mm-hmm. he, he he's trying to, and this is just me playing devil's advocate. I guess trying to set a good example, you mm-hmm. know, by not trying to over explode the salary cap situation and overplay players like this. But at the bottom line, you got a business run just like every other owner in the league, and you got to run your business the way you see fit. Um, because ultimately you're responsible for your losses or what have you. So mm-hmm. I see what he's saying. I see what he's trying to do, but at the same time, you know, you can't penalize the players for performance, especially right. when the performance is good. Facts. Or great, if you want to put it that way. True that, true that. Yeah. So um, how do y'all guys feel about the um, Carl Lawson signing in Jordan Phillips? You know, two good additions. We'll we'll get to actually see when they get to play with all the ones to see the you know the, the finishing product. Mm-hmm. In terms, of, I think they probably brought him in to start the, for the run game, especially Phillips. Phillips is a big boy, yeah. so yeah, I feel I like was, he, I was we've, seen flashes. we've seen some flashes with him already. Mm-hmm. I feel like that was a good pickup to, to replace your boy Hankins. So exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Having that big body, man, 6'6", 341 pounds, man, and he gets that push, man. That's that's major. We need that anchor or something like that. Yeah, you just, can't go, big you just huh? can't go outside and pull one of them off a tree. <laughs> nah, nah he, ain't, he ain't walking around like that. Who's agile, you know what I'm saying, who can actually move and make an impact. So, yeah, yeah. that's big. Um, definitely feel the need. Yeah, for sure. We needed that. Um, Carl Lawson, man, he's a veteran that's you know been very productive, even on even bad teams. And I heard him saying in a little interview uh, on the sidelines that uh, this is the first time he actually been like in a possible winning winning situation where he actually can have an impact and actually play with a lead. You know what I'm saying? And 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 that that really you know caught my ear when I heard that because that's something very major. So I'm so he's very hungry. And very um, anxious to get out there because this could be a big payday for him. He's he's been really good, man. He he was a big star coming out of college. You know what I'm saying? For sure. Um, for sure. He I think he's gonna be big for it. That was a great signing right there, Will McClay. But yeah. Well, but besides besides their physical ability, you know, now you've got some more experience in a young locker room. You know, and that's big. You know, that's very big. You're right. You know, it's, it's one of the things that hurt us. I felt in the past that we didn't have clear cut, cut leaders um, in the locker room, which you could pretty much point to and say, well, that's the man, you know, we just didn't have, especially on the defensive side of the ball, no one really, you had some guys attempted to do it, but you mm-hmm. had no one that really, quote unquote, you could say, that's the man, you know what I'm saying? Right. We need some of those men in that locker room to help guide these young guys and really allow them to uh, realize their full potential. Yeah, actually, you know what? Now think about it. Um, those two might get Osa back back free. You know what I'm saying? I think he was getting schemed on last year once he started having some success. Mm-hmm. So getting him back, you know, one on one in that middle man, I think he can have a big year as well. Yeah. So those guys really gonna elevate everybody else's play. Right. Mm-hmm. Well. On that note, we're going to wrap this session up, man. We appreciate y'all joining us on another Whiskey Wednesday. Y'all stay tuned to us, man. Like, subscribe, and comment, and we're going to get back to y'all as soon as possible, man. So, till next time.